Today on the show, we are discussing the unfortunate uh, occurrences of human trafficking being perpetrated um, on a regular basis in the country. A recent incident that brought the matter to the fore among several occurrences is the condition of 30 ladies desperately seeking to be rescued in Lebanon that have appealed to the Nigerian um, government to come to their head. Um, I know the story has changed. Uh, what the story is, how they are being rescued, and what strategy the federal government has adopted to fight against these manias is what we will be um, uh, discussing from our guests on the show today. Please, we are pleading to you. We are guests from Lebanon. We are stranded. Please, all of us that we are sitting here, we are all sleeping in this same room. We are cooking our food in that, inside this room. We are sleeping here. Everything we want to do inside this one room. Please, we need your help. We need your help, our government, our pastors, our affairs, our humans. Please, we need your help. We all, we have regretted coming to this place already. Please, we need your help. We need to go back to our father's land. We want to come home, please. Everybody, please. Please to the government that we want to come home. Tell them we want to come home. Please. We are begging you. Please come. Please help us. With me on Real Talk with, uh, with Kike today on the show is Madam Julie Oka Donley, who serves as the current Director General of the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIM. Welcome on the show, DG. It is it's nice to have you on the show today. Thank you for sharing part of your evening with us. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much. So the, let's just go straight to the point because I know that the situation of the stranded ladies, we know your agency have swung into action to rescue them. What is the update on this rescue? Yeah, right now we have over 200 um, stranded um, victims um, in Lebanon, including the 30 um, whose video went viral. Yes. Um, they've been registered and God willing, they will be coming back between the 12th and the 16th of this month. We are working very closely with the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, which is my supervising ministry. Uh, we're working with Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the ambassador, the Nigerian ambassador to Lebanon, the Lebanese community in Lebanon, mm -hmm. and um, the Oyo State government to bring mm -hmm. back um, the girl. All right. Thank you for the updates regarding that. And I would say well done. Kudos to you and your team and other agencies that and uh, government that have um collaborated with you to make sure that this comes to reality. Well done. And we're so proud of all you're doing. So quickly, you know, um, uh, let me ask, you know, I know some quarters want to believe that they traveled on their own free will to also, despite, despite the impact of their uh, traffickers, uh, so to speak. So COVID-19 lockdown in, in, in their country could have caused movement restriction, thereby stopping them from their normal business leading to the ladies being stranded. What is your opinion on this unfortunate incident? Well, the COVID-19 lockdown affected a lot of people because mm. um, those who were already in various destination countries mm. couldn't travel as a result of um, lack of movement. And mm. so we have a backlog of so many girls who would really love to come back who were stranded due to the lack of movement. Mm -hmm. But now that there's a considerable amount of movement, uh, we're getting a lot of mm -hmm. reports, a lot of, um, of stranded Nigerians who are desirous of coming back um, to Nigeria. Post-COVID-19, now we're going to be having a lot of online um, advertisements by fake agents who are going to be luring boys and girls to non-existent jobs all over the world. So we use okay. this opportunity to warn them so be wary of such adverts because there's no job anywhere, but it's just they're just going to be enslaved once more. Mm, okay, thank you on that. I know we, we know that Nigeria has an ambassador to Lebanon and we have deputy eye commission in the country of reference. I would like to know, or will I say, 
we want to believe that our high commissions have a part to play in the welfare and safety of Nigerians in these respective countries. So, my question is, what what's, what's the corporation res, uh, responses in terms of various high commissions in this um, reference point that you have been able to say that okay, they were able to come on board while all of this was ongoing? Well, on... Um Without the embassies, without the high commissions or high commissioners, we can't mm. even make progress because they are like the liaison between that country mm -hmm. and Nigeria. Mm. So we work very closely with the high commissioners or the ambassadors, as mm. the case may be, uh, to ensure that our citizens are well protected mm. and they are able to return them when we are able to return them. So we have a good working relationship, uh, especially with the ambassador to Lebanon. He has done so much you mm. know, in terms of trying to protect uh, victims of trafficking that are stranded in Lebanon. He has mm. done quite, in fact, he has stretched himself. Mm. And I think I give kudos to him. All right. So I can't help but ask this question that a notable 90% of human trafficking um, victims are females, especially young girls. And in most cases, they are mm, used for illegal sex trade. I don't know if I'm allowed to use that word. What is the main cause of the rampant human trafficking? And why are the females vulner the vulnerable targets during this period? Well, you know, sex themselves. Yeah. And um, demand for sex is very high all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, a lot of our young girls and even boys mm. are forced into prostitution mm. they are trafficked and then they, they, they then become sex objects because of their vulnerability mm. in the countries where they find themselves mm. uh, pornography sells like hot cake some mm. of them are used for pornography mm. some of them are forced to sleep with animals mm. and all sorts for the pleasure of people to watch mm. and so because sex sells a lot it is very easy and the demand is extremely high Mm. It is very easy for a lot of these um, irregular migrants mm. to fall victim of this um, forced prostitution mm. and um, all sorts of exploitation, mm. including organ harvesting. Mm. All right. So before I ask you my next question, let me use this opportunity to call the audience. Our phone lines are open. Please ask. Call us um, on zero seven hundred nine two three nine two three nine two three again zero seven hundred nine two three nine two three ask us your questions your queries eat us with any questions you have because you have the right authority on the phone lines today so ma'am while we're talking about um um or your state government i know your agency is expected to be funded by the federal government and um on rescued missions like this um uh, why do we why do we um why do we see other bodies like the only of ife the governor of or your state pledging to help uh, uh, to help rather than the federal government quickly taking responsibility before this video went viral? It is everybody's responsibility, including the Oyo State government, <laughs> okay. because a lot of victims from that are come from Oyo State. Let us realize, first of all, mm. that these victims come from a state before we talk about Nigeria. Interesting. Um, the fight against human trafficking is a fight that involves the whole of society and the whole of government the mm. whole of government includes the state government the local government mm. everyone has a role to play the media the cso's the ngos mm. so the federal government cannot do this alone um it is high time that the state government begin to partner with the state, uh, federal government well i think it is coming late but it's better late than never all the state governments ought to have been actively in, been actively involved in repatriation and protection and prevention right from day one Coming in at this time is late, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. but it's equally commendable. And I expect that every other government, every other governor of all the states will join NASIP in the fight against human trafficking. It is their responsibility. Mm. Thank you so much on that. And I agree with you that it takes all of us to work towards, you know, trying to look for how to resolve all of these challenges facing us. But in an interview you granted earlier, you also explicitly requested for funding and support however i understand um what you've just explained to us and the likes and i also know that 
um, UNICEF, uh, uh, UNESCO, and other international agencies give financial aid to your causes. How come funding is still the major problem to the agency, if I may ask? Well, I'm sure you don't expect that um, international bodies will take the responsibility of the federal government completely. Mm -hmm. That cannot happen. Yes. Uh, the federal government has its role to play, which is explained. Yeah. And then other international bodies complement the efforts of the federal government. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you don't expect them to take it as their sole responsibility. And everyone has a role to play. Even the organized private sector, the, uh, the, 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 the corporate organizations, everyone has a role to play in terms of funding. Um, in the fight such as this. This is not a joke. Mm. It's, a very serious, um, it's a very serious crime that we are talking about. Absolutely. And it's, and it's not cheap at all. Mm. All right. Thank you. You know, it's, it's important for me to also... Um, let you know that it is, you know, or will I say that it is confident to know that you are working and um, actively fighting against human trafficking. We follow you with all the activities that is ongoing, and I can. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, what did you say? Patronize you? Thank you. <laughs> Apparently, the fr the fight is not enough, just like you've said, and it takes every one of us to come together to fight towards it. But you know, again, let me ask, what's your strategies that you're adopting in synergy with other agencies to nip the problem um, in the board? What are the milestones achieved thus far? For us, um, the strategy of prevention, which is very important in terms of creating awareness mm. with all our international partners and our local partners and mm. NGOs and CSOs, mm -hmm. we carry out massive sensitization campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the strategy of um, uh, establishing anti-human trafficking task forces. Mm. Um, Oyo State has not yet established there, so we are hoping that very soon we can go to Oyo State mm -hmm. and set up their task forces so that it will be easier for us to work together. Because if we, they all have um, human trafficking task forces, all they need to do is to liaise with the federal government direct. Nobody needs to be going around doing different things at cross purposes. Mm -hmm. We'll all walk and talk with one voice at the same time. Mm -hmm. So yes, so those are part of our strategies to ensure that all 36 states have the state and the human trafficking task forces. Of course, we are looking at having joint operations, mm -hmm. joint investigations with mm -hmm. some law enforcement agencies, which is what we have been doing okay. and will continue to do. Okay. Yes, in terms of prosecuting uh, uh, um, tra uh, perpetrators. And so, of course, rehabilitation, we can have joint rehabilitation strategies after they've gone through the process in NAPTI, through the sheltering, the rehabilitation. Then, of course, the states can now complement our efforts by ensuring that every victim is empowered. To, re to make sure that they are not re-trafficked. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have a message from one of our listeners. It said, good evening, Real Talk with Kike. It's quite worrisome. It's quite a worrisome trend to see the terrible conditions Nigerians trafficked abroad are put through. Please, I would like to ask if NAPTIM is empowered to prosecute corporates abroad or whether they follow prosecution abroad for those already apprehended to ensure that justice is served. That's for you, ma'am. We share information with our international partners, law, agent, law enforcement agencies mm -hmm. and destination countries mm -hmm. to ensure that the perpetrators are brought to book while we are ensuring that the Nigerian perpetrators here in Nigeria are brought to book. Mm. So it has an end-to-end -end kind of strategy where they are prosecuting their, their citizens while we are prosecuting our citizens. Okay, thank you for that. So, you know, I understand that according to United States Department of, of State and the publication report in June 2018, it states that the government of Nigeria under the Tier 2 watch list does not fully meet the minimum standard for the elimination of trafficking. However, it is making um, significant efforts to do so. Have we met this requirement? If not, how close are we? As far as I'm concerned, we've met the requirements even more than those who are uh, responsible for writing the trafficking in persons report. Mm. Um, there is a protocol called the Palermo Protocol. It okay. clearly defines what human trafficking is. Okay. And therefore, in writing a report, mm. if you bring us extraneous matters that are not related to human trafficking, then of course, you cannot judge Nigeria based on such extraneous factors. So as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria should be on tier one. Uh. 
All right. Thank you so much. So this might be uh, my my last question to you. I know that there's a legal angle to this discussion. And, di and that re revolves around the panel code for human trafficking and the libel punishment to offenders. So my question is, are these panel codes rightly implemented? And if so, have there been forthcoming or productivity in the war against human trafficking? Come again with your question. Yeah. So my, my my question is, I understand that there's a legal angle to all our discussion thus far. And that revolves around the panel code for human trafficking and the libel punishment to offenders. Um, are, there panel, are there panel codes rightly implemented? And if so, uh, have there been uh, 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 have there been forthcoming or productive uh, pr productivity in the in the war against human trafficking? Um, human trafficking is a federal um, law. It has mm. nothing to do with the penal code. Okay. Um, we have the trafficking in persons prohibition enforcement um, law. Okay. And um, I think that for me, it can be better because right now we are trying to make um, uh, we are trying to make some amendments mm. to include life in prison mm. as part of the punishment. Mm -hmm. um, implementation for me, I think, is a key problem because we have situations where the new law uh, provides that the minimum should be five years imprisonment plus imposition of a fine. Mm. Unfortunately, um, we don't have any control over the court. We have seen cases where courts give option of fine whereas the new law has abolished that and said you cannot give option of fine mm. because the crime against human trafficking is a very serious crime yes unfortunately we have cases where judges give option of fines we've seen cases where God and, and um, judges give six months or one year mm. so yes implementation if we can implement the law the way it is i think for now it is fair enough while we amend it to make it um, stiffer, punishment um, a lot stiffer. All right. Again, many thanks, Mrs. Julie Oko, for honoring my invite. And it's been, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show to give Nigerians first-hand information on the case of human trafficking. Of course, you know you have your colleague in the studio with, with us here. All right. So thank you. Thank you so, so much for joining us today. We'll go on a quick break and return after headline news. But first, a word from our sponsors. Do not touch that. Out. This is Real Talk with Kike.